So this is how to convert thousands of FLAC files or other lossless audio files to MP3s super fast. So I've got this directory here with a load of FLAC files in it. So there are 10 FLAC files in this directory and in each of the album directories there are another 10 FLAC files. So in each of these there are 10 FLAC files. So one of the ways to convert all of these files to MP3s is to use FFmpeg and a bash for loop. So we supply FFmpeg with each one of these file names, one after the other, and convert them to MP3s. So that's one way of doing it, but there is a faster way. So I'm just going to open up a terminal, and let's just have a look at this rough script that I've written to do this. So first let's simulate a bash for loop using this script. So if I just open it up, so vim tilde slash bin slash flac to mp3. So if I just jump to the top and let's just scroll down, actually let's go right to the bottom. So to simulate a bash for loop, I'm just going to make one change to this script and I'm going to change CPU count to one and just save and exit this. So I'll go over exactly what that script does in a minute, but first let's just run this test. So I'm just going to CD to my desktop where that music folder is and it's music. So you can see this is the same directory. And if we run flac to mp3 and hit enter, you can see that it starts to transcode each one of these music files one after the other. So there's one that's finished. And let's wait for another one. Okay, there's a second one. Let's just quit this. So you can see that it just goes through one by one. Now let's run that again, but this time let's just have a quick look at the CPU usage. So I'm just gonna bring over the system monitor. So let's run that and bring this over. So you can see that one core shoots up to 100%, but all the rest are pretty much doing not a lot. So, how can we use more of our CPU cores to do this? So let's just quit this script quickly. So get rid of that. So if we open that script again, and let me just reduce the size of this. There we go. And I'm just gonna change this one to CPU count. So in, and let's exit this and save it. And let's just clear that screen. Let's just make it a bit bigger. And now let's run the same script. So flac to mp3. And if I bring over the system monitor, you'll see that all of the cores are now hitting 100%. And you can see that the files are being generated really quickly. So let's stop that and let's have a race. So on the left hand side of the screen, we're going to run the single core version. The right hand side of the screen we're going to run the multi-core version and we'll see which one wins and by how much. So you can see that running multiple instances of FFmpeg in parallel handily beats running a single instance of FFmpeg by a huge margin. So the question is can we go faster? And the answer to that is yes, yes we can. So if we open that script up again and make another change to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. And don't worry, I'll throw this up on GitHub so you can have a look at it. So let's just decrease the size of this. So in our running process of FFmpeg, if we change from constant bitrate to a variable bitrate, we shouldn't have any audible difference in the files it will increase the speed at which we can transcode these files and also the resulting file sizes will be smaller. So let's make that change now. So instead of BA, what we want to do is we want QA and instead of 195K, let's go for the matching variable bitrate, which would be three. And let's save this and run this. So you can see that going from a constant bitrate to a variable bitrate with a comparable audio quality has given us a speed increase in transcoding and also has the added benefit of making our mp3 files slightly smaller. 
So let's just have a quick overview of that script. So let's open it with Vim. Uh, let's do tilde slash bin slash flak to mp3. It's just called flak to mp3, but it does other audio files as well. Okay, so let's just have a quick look through this. So this is the function that takes in a task. And what it does is it will start up a sub process, which runs FFmpeg. And then you've got the full path, which is the original path to our flak file in our example. And it does the conversion. And then the output is this new path here, which is going to be an MP3 directory within the directory that our original audio file lives. So that's the full path to the original audio file. And this is the full path to the new MP3 file. So it just outputs that. If there are any errors, it logs them. And it also can take any of these other file formats as input. So not just FLAC, but it will do AAC, AAX, AIF, and so on. And this is the main part of the script that creates a pool of threads. So CPU count is basically saying, how many cores do you have? And as there are 12 in my machine here, then it creates 12 threads. And each one of those threads is responsible for executing the function that we just looked at. So down here is where everything kind of happens. So what it does is we're mapping that function, which was convert to MP3. And these are the inputs for that function. So it's a list of processes. Effectively, it's just a list of the input files. And one of these is mapped to an instance of this function. So a simple way to put that is convert to MP3 is the task that we want to do. Processes is the input for those tasks. So we take one item out of processes, put it into an instance of convert to MP3, and then run that sub process. So this thread pool is 12 threads. So what we're doing is we're running 12 instances of FFmpeg at any one time. And when they complete, we just run the next one in the list. That's basically all that's happening there. And then all we do is we have a look for any jobs that failed. So any FFmpeg instances that exited with a code other than zero, it will log those to a file in the directory that this script was uh, executed in. And finally, all we're doing is we're just printing out a, we're running another sub process here and we're just printing out a notification to the desktop with the message saying how many files it did successfully and how long it took. And that's basically it. But I'll just throw the script up on GitHub so you can do what you want with it. So let's just quit this. One other thing to add is I could probably make this even faster if I used async IO instead of a thread pool. I haven't tested that yet, but it may give us a, a small speed increase. Now you're probably thinking you could probably speed this up using multiple computers and you'd be right. You probably could. If I was running this across multiple computers, I'd probably make quite a few changes and use something like rabbit MQ and celery. But yeah, so that's how to convert thousands of lossless audio files to mp3s super fast and i hope you found something in this video useful if you did please don't forget to subscribe with notifications on so just remember to click that bell it really helps out the channel also clicking like helps out the channel and commenting and thanks for watching goodbye